I'm, I'm, I'm so happy, man. Like, I'm so happy right now. Like, I, I, I could cry tears of joy with just how happy I am to see this episode grace my presence to sit down and watch this episode today. I have been waiting for a year and a half. Many of us have been waiting a year and a half to finally get the continuation of Mushoku Tensei. And at long last, it is here. We got to finally watch the first episode of Season 2. And all those that were worried about, let's say, if Season 2 was going to be a massive downgrade because of the director change, maybe the art style was going to shift, all that, I feel like this episode will definitely, you know, get rid of the worries, so to speak. Because if there is one thing that really is telling about Episode 0 of Mushoku Tensei Season 2 is that it doesn't hold your hand. And let me get right into that. So if we go back to like previous episodes of Mushoku Tensei and all that, there's a lot of things that hint at kind of what happened in Episode 0 that we got today. Like, I mean, for instance, this episode, Episode 14. This was at the end of Episode 14, you know, the, in the first season. And we get to see, you know, Sylphie right here. We get to see who she's hanging around and all that. You know, we had hints of what's been going on, so to speak, in, you know, Sylphie's life while Rudy and Eris was on their journey. And we even get, like, some hints at who the big bads were or might be throughout, you know, season, you know, two, because we get to see the royalty here when they get rid of Eris's grandpa. So there's just was a lot of setup early on in season one. And I just, I love how, like, if you notice these little details throughout season one, you'll be like, oh crap, you know, the stuff that happens throughout this episode with some of these characters that are introduced to this banquet hall and all that, it literally is exactly, you know, where Eris's grandpa died. It's just like, all this is kind of fitting together. It's just, it's kind of messed up. And it's just like, it's kind of cool how they don't really try to tell you that. It's for those that were paying attention. But let's get into the point of why I said it's in good hands. The big thing about, you know, this episode that kind of lets me know that it's in good hands is because it does, once again, the very thing that season one did. A lot of, you know, show don't tell. It, it expects its audience to be paying attention, it expects its audience to be reading in between the lines, and it expects the audience to kind of remember certain key events that has happened throughout season one. Now granted, it has been a year and a half, and if you're an anime only, it makes complete sense why you would forget a lot of this if you haven't recently re-watched the show. Hell, I actually re-watched the anime all day yesterday. I, I sat down, I re-watched it, and it was a blast going through these episodes again and watching all this, kind of getting a whole refresher of the anime, what it covered and all that to be able to dive into episode zero but what is really refreshing about this is that there is no recap like I want to point that out like literally this episode starts off with just like Sylphie falling from the sky and it just it's expecting you to know what's going on that's exactly what happens throughout this episode it expects you to know what just happened to Sylphie that she was in the teleportation mana disaster you know she's confused and everything about her falling from the sky like what happened happens here is absolutely terrifying. I, I feel like this needs to really be talked about because it's just like... I, I don't think there is any way to really describe this in any other way than just imagine you're just standing in the middle of your house and then in a split second you're falling from the sky the sensation of just free falling from the sky not even knowing where you're at when you look around as you're falling it's a landscape completely unknown to you and you're literally just flinging in the air the wind's blasting in your face you're afraid you're a, a kid what what would you do how would you react the absolute fear that you would feel in this moment makes a lot of sense. I mean, the fear of falling is like a, a primal fear. It really is. And in this case, it makes a lot of sense why throughout this episode, towards the end, we see that, you know, Sylphie, she struggles with sleeping at night. She has, like, PTSD because she has dreams of falling and all that. It makes perfect sense. Now, the... The big elephant in the room that we need to talk about as well is her hair. Because I feel like this is something that a lot of people are going to instantly kind of assume... Once again, it's not directly stated, but her hair went solid white, and we know that Sylphie's hair color was green. I mean, hell, you even literally see it at the beginning of the episode, and there's a brief little transition while she's falling, her hair turns 
white slash silver. And in this moment, you could assume a few things. You could assume because of her falling, she was stressed out, and because of the stress, you know, her hair went white. Now, this is a common theme that happens in a lot of anime and manga. Tokyo Ghoul is a really good example of this. A character that undergoes a lot of stress, you know, their hair goes completely white. And this is obviously very exaggerated because your hair doesn't just instantly turn white like that, you know, under stress, but it is anime, it is a world of magic at the end of the day, which is another thing to talk about. We need to talk about magic and what Sylphie was doing in this moment. So, obviously, yes, there was a lot of stress on her shoulders at this moment because of just everything, you know, the, the fear of falling to your death, not even knowing where you're at as well. But she was using a, a constant stream of magic. For instance, in this brief moment, we see her continuously shooting like water, trying to slow her, you know, speed down on her fall. And thanks to just how fast she was going, when she finally, like, got near the ground, the very force of her magic crushed the creature's head in, as you can see clearly on screen. It speaks for itself just how fast she was going to even do damage to something like that, because you could assume, I mean, we don't need to be like a, a biologist or be able to study this creature to know that this creature is incredibly sturdy. I mean, hell, look at its tusk, look how massive it is, look at its muscles. This thing obviously is built to tank things. It's built to take some damage. And the fact that Sylphie, this, you know, little girl this small, was able to fall that far and then push wind and water like she did down onto this creature says enough the sheer force that she was trying to use to slow herself down from going that fast to the ground. So, yeah, it just, there, there's a lot that really is in play here. So she was using a lot of magic, and we have seen early on in Mushiku Tensei, like season one, episode one, that if, like, for instance, Rudy, he overuses magic, he passes out. We have seen this. Like, we legit have seen Rudy pass out quite a few times throughout season one because he just overused magic so much. And so we can assume this entire scene where Sylphie goes unconscious is probably because she overused magic to such a high degree that, you know, she just, she straight up passed out. She went to her absolute maximum. So this goes once again along with the very show-don't-tell type of immersion that Mushiku Tensei likes to do. That season one was always offering us when we watched it. And I love that. Like I said, the very essence of Mushiku Tensei is obviously still alive, especially with just how this opening sequence is alone. It just says a lot without really having to spoon feed you information. It expects you to pay attention. I appreciate this so much. Now, besides that, we also need to talk about some things that's being set up. So, this episode obviously is very, um, political heavy. Like, it gets into politics. It kind of gets into just, like, what's been going on within the kingdom since Rudy and Eris was transported and they were traveling with Ruijard. You know, they, we get to kind of get an update status. So, just what certain politics are going on, who the enemies and the bad guys are, which I kind of already talked about as well. You know, these two appeared actually in episode 14 of Mushiku Tensei Season 1, as you could see here, which aired back in, you know, 2022, or was released in March, you know, 1st, 2022. Um, but anyway, Anyways, getting back on topic though, wait, that's not correct. Wait a minute, why does the date say March? This did not air in March of last year. Oh, I guess they must be counting the dub release because there is a dub. Anyways, um, getting back on topic though, the point is, is this is a very political episode and these two obviously are just straight scumbags. We get to see that they're, you know, they're playing games and stuff. They're really trying to get rid of the princess that we see within this episode. That, you know, there was literally an assassination attempt on her life. And, I mean, even the whole whole scene as well. I also like this, how this is a nod to two characters. And it, it, it kind of plays along with just mages in general within this story. For instance, in the first episode when Rudy was learning water magic and wind magic and stuff, you know, he, uh, he blasted a hole in his second floor building. It, a hole completely opened up, and he looked outside, he was shocked, and he fell backwards. This is obviously a reference to that. This is a reference to, you know, just Rudy blasting a hole in, you know, his house, and really opened up the world of magic, and in this case, that's what just happened to, you know, Sylphie within this episode. But also, we saw this exact same thing as well from Roxy, when she was upset, because she walked in on, let's just say, some very explicit things throughout season one, and she 
actually blasted a hole in a building as well. So we've had, you know, already two examples before this one to where a hole was blasted in the wall. So I just, I like these little nods. Once again, going along with the very show-don't-tell mentality and expecting its audience to be paying attention, I really cannot state enough how much I appreciate that. It really makes it feel like the series is respecting my intelligence as a watcher. Now, besides that, we also got to talk about just, like, Sylphie and her motivation to work with the princess and go on a journey, and the very sequence of events at the end. I like how they use the ending song, which goes very well along with what, you know, Season 1 did, with using music over visual scenes, showcasing characters traveling, world building, immersion, just everything felt very in line with what Mushiku Tensei has continuously given us since the very beginning. So, any worries I think people have about Season too. Like I said, I think was really quelled with this. Obviously, there is some goofy looking scenes. Like we have like the falling segment that I, I think could look goofy to some. I don't think it's bad personally. I just I saw some complaints, people talking about it, but I can understand. But um, besides that, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like episode one legitimately is good. If there's one thing I do want to add on though and talk about is the teleportation event because I already showed kind of brief image of it. So we know that obviously Sylphie got you know transported into the middle of the air. She was literally free falling out of the sky into a, an area she had no idea where she was. And we already saw, you know, kind of one example of this with, you know, Aisha and Lilia and how they were transported underwater. Like, literally, after they got transported, you know, and this was episode 20 of season 1, FYI, if you're wanting to know. Uh, after they got transported by the mana disaster, they were underwater in a lake and got out of the lake. They could have drowned. And... I remember reviewing this episode and talking about it. I was like, this kind of elaborates on the fact that there's people that, you know, were in this mana disaster that potentially got put in the ocean. Like, just think about it for a second, the, the fear of that. I mean, we already know Sylphie teleported in the sky now, but imagine being teleported under the ocean. You're dead. And, and, and then it brings up a question, could you be theoretically teleported in a cave underground that has, like, no exit? You know, there's just so many things that, you know, this episode opened up, and then obviously this episode goes more into that. Just like, holy crap, you know, imagine how many people potentially got teleported into the sky. You don't need solid ground, apparently. You could have been teleported anywhere. You, you don't need to actually have two feet on the ground. That's scary. That is legitimately frightening. So we just kind of got a little bit of a glimpse of just how many people potentially died because they didn't have magic and they were in the exact same situation as Sylphie. So yeah, I guess I'm going to wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for everyone that tuned in and watched this video. I greatly appreciate it. I'm happy to have Mushiku Tensei back. It is phenomenal to be able to talk about this series again and really dive in and break it down. It is easily one of my favorite series to really break apart, kind of similar to ReZero. And hopefully you all enjoy this analysis of the future episodes and all that of the series because I'm definitely going to have a lot of fun and hopefully all of you, you know, join me on my journey throughout Season 2. I can't wait. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Be safe. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like if you haven't already left a like. Or leave a dislike if you didn't like the video. I could see the dislikes even if you can't. But be safe. Stay healthy. Chibi out.